Hello, I'm Alistair Charlton, technology reporter for the International Business Times UK, and today I'm looking at the Asus Padphone 2. On the face of it, it's just like any other Android smartphone. It's got a 4.7 inch screen, it's powered by a 1.5 gigahertz quad-core processor. But what makes the Padphone 2 different to any other smartphone you've seen before is that it comes with a 10.1 inch tablet. And what you do is you take the phone and you slide it into the back of the tablet, and the tablet vibrates and gives you a little notification to let you know you've put it in correctly and then you've got an Android tablet. Now the tablet itself doesn't do any processing and it doesn't have any storage. That's all done on the phone. But what you do have now is a 10.1 inch screen and it works just like any other Android tablet you've ever used before. Looking at the tablet, there are no ports, uh, no SD card slots, no nothing really. All you get is a micro USB port on the bottom and um, a volume rocker and a screen lock button on the top corner. Um, it's a little bit disappointing that you don't get a SD card slot to increase the storage, but it, on the other hand, it means that all your storage is on the phone, so you know where it is and you don't have to um, sync between the two devices. We'll just look at the phone on its own to start with, though. And like I said, it's a 4.7 inch screen with a resolution of 1280 by 800. And it's really very sharp, very crisp. Um, it's got good, good colours, good uh, level of darkness, and the um, viewing angle is particularly good. It's covered in Gorilla, gorilla Glass on the front. Uh, on the back, it's plastic, and there is a 13 megapixel camera with autofocus and an LED flash. Altogether, it's about 650 grams, so it's slightly lighter than um, the newest Retina iPad. But with the phone being on the back as it is, um, the, 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 the centre of gravity is a little bit off, so it actually feels a little bit top heavy and it's a little bit strange in the hand, um, but you soon get used to that. Screen resolution of the tablet is um, 1280 by 720, so it's not quite as high as the phone. Um, that means it's, it's okay, it's perfectly usable, but text isn't quite as sharp as it is on some other um, more premium tablets. And on the front, we've got a uh, black bezel, as with any other tablet, and a front-facing camera. You can also use the phone's rear camera while it's docked into the tablet. The tablet itself doesn't provide any storage or any uh, processing power at all. All of that is done by the phone. Um, so in a way, that's a good thing because you know everything is stored in one place. All of your films, all of your photos, your documents, everything is all on the phone. And then when you plug it into the tablet, it's all on the tablet. But that also means that you're stuck, again, as I said, with uh, 32 gigs of storage on the phone. What the tablet does have is a 5,000 milliamp battery. And that charges the phone as soon as you plug it in and uh, it means that the phone's always topped up while you're using it in the tablet. As for general use, I've got about a day and a half out of the phone on its own uh, and plugged into the tablet. It works just as any other 10-inch tablet does, so you get a good few days out of it of, uh, of average use. So for a phone, the um, quad-core processor is really very good. It's as quick as any phone you've used before. It's uh, as good as an iPhone 5, as good as a, a Galaxy S3 or an HTC One. Um, it picks up games really quickly, even stuff like uh, Real Racing 3 work just as well as something much simpler like Angry Birds. Uh, and multitasking as well, of course, is very quick, very fluid, and, uh, and the screen's very responsive. Um, and the same can be said when you plug it into the tablet as well. Uh, at first you might think that a tablet powered by a smartphone won't be as good as a regular tablet, but the truth is the tablet works great. Again, you can play those same games full screen on the tablet just as well as you can on the phone which is really impressive. A few applications on the phone are uh, optimized to um, switch sort of um, intelligently when you take the phone out of the tablet. So say I open the settings app on the phone and I can use the settings app. If I then slide it into the tablet, um, the operating system works out what's going on and then gives me the um, settings app on the tablet screen at the right size and the correct resolution. Not all apps do that though, and by default none of them do. So by default you do that and you'll get an error telling you to reopen the app, which is a bit annoying. Um, and most third party apps don't do that at all, which is a shame um, because say you're, you're playing a game on the tablet and you've got to go out, but you want to play the game on the train on your phone, you take your phone out and the game restarts, um, which is quite frustrating. But on the flip side of that, there are some benefits. Like I said, you've got everything stored in one place uh, and also, with it being a phone, it has a 3G connection, so when you plug it into the tablet, you then have a tablet with a 3G connection, and you're only paying one, uh, one monthly bill. So that's great, instead of having to pay for data for each device. 
overall, for £600, it's a very, very good phone and an OK tablet. There are some drawbacks. It feels a little bit heavy um, because of the, the way the phone sticks out on the back. When you put it down on the table and type on it, it wobbles around a bit, which uh, is quite annoying. Um, if you were to compare it to, say, getting um, a, a Google Nexus 4 and a Nexus 10 smartphone and tablet, the price is about the same. And to be honest, those two devices together are probably better. But if you do want this, if you do want the idea of having 3G on both devices for one data bill and the idea of having um, all of your storage on one central place, then the Pad Phone 2 has its uses. It could be a niche market, sure, but it's, it's out there for people who want a device uh, of that type. I'm Alistair Charlton, technology reporter for the International Business Times UK.